Hey guys, thanks for watching. Scott from Journal Adventures here. Today I'm reviewing the Jackery 1000 power station. Jackery was nice enough to provide me with the Jackery along with two 100 watt solar panels to try out. So I recently got back from a trip with my two sons, went up to a remote lake in central Ontario, spent four days out there and I took the Jackery with me just to see if I could have some luxuries that I wouldn't normally take camping. So I took a big air mattress, I took a fan, I took a bunch of crazy things that I wouldn't normally take. I've tried it on an electric cooler. I want to show you how it performs on real everyday sort of tasks. So um, I went through a bunch of my power tools, some appliances in my kitchen, an electric blanket. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how it worked, what it actually realistically did drop from power, and exactly how effective the solar panels were. So I want this review to be a real honest review of how it works and what you can expect, and if it's something for you, and it's, you're gonna spend that kind of money, what you can really expect to get from it. So for starters, it's a nice compact size. In my opinion, it's a perfect balance with portability and the actual power. It's a 1000 watt hour battery station, it charges a lot of different things. I'm going to get into all the ports and that sort of thing right now. But the size of it is fairly compact for what it does. It only weighs 22 pounds. Has a nice comfortable carrying handle. So there's ventilation on both ends of the unit. So the fans can run. There's really nothing on the back side here. All the ports and outlets and everything you need are on one side of the unit. And the Jackery 1000 also comes with a little flashlight, which in a pinch, if you're looking for your headlamp, what I like about this is I'm not a tech expert. It's really intuitive and it's easy to use. You can pretty much open this up and with the ports and all the plugs that come with it from Jackery, you're going to be able to figure out how to use this really quickly. The input, you can plug in an 8 millimeter cord or an Anderson cable to run your solar panels. This comes with a, an AC plug where you can just plug this in to your wall and it'll take about seven and a half hours to charge it from completely drained. So I've charged this and you can hit the display button and you'll see that it's 96% uh, it's charged. I've been using it a little bit. And it gives you the input and output. It's a really simple display on here. Because nothing's plugged into it, it's zero input, zero output. If I plugged in for example, my MacBook Pro, and it was charging it, you'd see the output. That would be the watts per hour that the MacBook Pro charger was drawing, or my electric fridge sort of thing. The input is if I plugged it into a wall to charge it, or if I plugged it into the solar panels, how much wattage was coming in and charging the unit. So the DC, you plug in here. What I like about this, it comes with a 12 volt charger. My electric fridge comes with a 12 volt adapter so I can plug it directly into here and charge that and anything else that has a 12 volt charger. So it has two USB-C ports. They're 18 watt ports so I could plug in my MacBook Pro and charge it but it's not going to charge quick enough that it will uh, drain ASCII if I'm using it, especially doing video editing. So if I needed to charge my MacBook Pro quickly or to charge it while I was using it, I could still have to use the, the power cube and plug it into the AC and charge it that way. So Jackery gives you a nice uh, little storage bag for the cables that come with it. Oops, over here a bit. So basically you can charge it four different ways. Two of the most common ways are one, plug it into your wall outlet at home before you leave on a trip. It comes with this nice big charger here. Just plugs into here. And charging it into the wall, and charging it into the wall outlet of your house usually takes about seven and a half hours to charge. And it's as simple as plugging this into here, eight millimeter cable into there, and this into an outlet in your wall in your house. You sit back, you charge it, and then you're good to go on your trip. So one of the things I find most convenient about this is that I can plug the 12 volt adapter into the input of the Jackery, plug this into the outlet in my truck, and while I'm driving, the Jackery 1000 is charging. So I don't need solar panels on the roof of my truck to charge the Jackery because on the trips that I do when I'm traveling, I do a lot of different trips and I can have canoes, 
mountain bikes, um, different storage on the roof of my truck, and I'm constantly trying to come up with the, the best system for me and what I need to have up there. So I don't really want to waste all that space with a solar panel. So what I love about this is it's going to charge while I'm driving anyways. I can still plug in my fridge and batteries and whatever else I need to charge during the trip. I can plug into here. And when I get to where my destination is, I can use the solar panels at that time. And they're fairly compact where I can actually take them on quite a few different spots. So Jackery says you can charge it four different ways and you can. Wall charger around seven and a half hours. Car charger around 14 hours to charge it from completely empty. Solar panels again about 17 hours depending on the weather. But if this was completely drained, 17 hours of solar charging with 100 watt solar panel. I have two, so you'd be basically cutting that time in half. And then of course an electric generator would charge it as well. So here is the Jackery solar panels. Jackery Solar Saga 100. So the output is 100 watts. So they're easy to carry. They fold together with a nice handle. There's magnets to hold it tight. It's actually a very durable finish. Um, sometimes you maybe you think of solar panels as being delicate, but um, you feel like these are actually pretty durable for outdoor purposes, right? To get out there and actually use it the way it's meant to be. So anyways, it folds up nice, it clicks in there, so it has a nice carrying handle. This is a flip out stand. So when you set it up, you just don't want to lie it on the ground. Ideally, you want to have it on an angle pointing directly at the sun as best you can. But what is really slick, because uh, I'm notorious for losing cables and that sort of thing, is Jackery has it so that right here is the cord, and this is the cord that comes out and you plug into your Jackery 1000 to charge your power station. Because I have two Solar Saga 100 watt panels, Jackery makes this adapter. So I literally can plug in the eight millimeter from each solar panel to this adapter. And this goes right directly into the Jackery so I can be inputting 200 watts of solar power into the jackery to charges, which is really slick. So I'm gonna show you how this works right now. So this is using one solar panel. It's inputting realistically, it's actually showing 50 watts that's being input into the jackery. So I'm gonna unplug this. I'm gonna now plug both solar panels into the jackery. Now we're gonna use the um, Anderson outlet. The way the panels are set up right now are pretty much optimal. You can see by the shadow that they're facing the sun directly at 90 degrees. They're not slant, they're not cantered off at an angle. So this is the angle that I have them on. So in theory I could put them up a little bit more like this. But the way they were they're drying they're inputting 110 watts into that. So just to give you an idea that this is a genuine review, I have two 100 watt solar panels plugged in under perfectly sunny skies, the exact perfect angle, and I'm only getting an input of just over 100 watts an hour. So that should help you if you're deciding whether to buy one or two panels. So at this rate it would take 10 hours to charge the Jackery, which still isn't too bad. Some of the things Jackery tells you it'll power, laptop, drones, computers, coffee makers, toasters, refrigerators, blenders. So those are some luxurious items to bring camping, uh, most likely never to come on any of my trips. But some of those things I will be using more and more as I get on longer trips and I'm by myself. I like the idea of doing some of my video editing in my truck with my laptop. And I've never been able to charge my laptop with the portable little batteries that I normally carry during my backpacking trips. Okay, for example, here are my drone batteries. There's four batteries. These are batteries for a DJI Mavic Air drone. And I will plug it in. I'll show you exactly how it works. We plug it into the Jackery 1000, hit the AC. 
when it kicks in, the display automatically lights up and it tells you what it's drawing for power to charge the batteries. And you can see how they're charging. You got the green light flashing. That indicates that the batteries are charging. And it looks like it's drawing about 64 watts an hour. So it's fluctuating anywhere from 60 to 70, but it looks like the constant seems to be about 64 watts per hour. So basically, I can charge my drone batteries now, and I've never been able to do it before, which I'm really excited about because I like to have more drone footage in my videos, and I've always gone on trips with just having, I mean, I bought extra batteries. I have seven in total, which is a lot, and they're expensive to buy, right? So it's nice to be able to charge them now. And this is how it works. And the quick math is basically, if you want to know how long you could charge these or how long the Jackery would last, always think of the Jackery 1000 as 1000 watt hours of charging anything and everything's going to draw differently, right? So this battery pack is drawing 64 watts an hour. I'll plug in my fridge and you'll see what that draws. Um, charging batteries is more of a constant charge, so it's drawing the same amount. Whereas charging your refrigerator, it initially kicks on when the compressor kicks on, but then once it maintains the temperature, once it gets to the temperature it wants, it can maintain that for a little while. So the draw on the jackery is going to fluctuate depending on when the refrigerator kicks on and kicks off, right? Okay, so we saw what the drone batteries was drawing. Now, here is my mobile electric cooler or refrigerator, whatever you want to call it. It's a 40 liter refrigerator and it's fairly new. I'm going to plug it into the jackery and see what it draws. This time it'll be in the DC 12 volt outlet. I have to push that on, shut the AC off. So the fan in the refrigerator is running. So right now the jackery is drawing about 60 watts an hour. The refrigerator has been in the hot garage, so it's empty, it's warm inside, it's running as high capacity as it would be running at any time, and it's drawing about 60 watts an hour. If this was full, which is the most efficient way to run a cooler or refrigerator, you fill it up with uh, anything you can. If your food starts to get thin, I usually bring a water bottle, that way you can fill up the water bottle and just fill the airspace in your cooler. That way, once the water's cold, it keeps its temperature better than just air in your cooler. So when you open up, it retains the temperature, keeps it cooler, just makes it work more efficiently. So one of the tests I'm most curious about doing is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the refrigerator in my garage in the summertime, it's hot in here, and I'm gonna charge the jackery to 100%. We're gonna fill up the cooler with uh, bottles and that sort of thing, and we're gonna run it and see how long the refrigerator will run on one charge from the jackery with no solar panels, just strictly running from the battery charge. So what I've done is i filled my cooler. It hasn't been running, it's warm. I've thrown a bunch of uh, bottles in here, some beer, some wine, and uh, some of them cold, some of them are not. The cooler, like I said, is warm inside. So we're gonna let it get up to cold temperature and maintain that temperature until the Jackery 1000 runs out of power. It's about, uh, you know, two thirds full. So there's some air in here, which I guess this represents a typical average use of the cooler. So we're gonna shut this. I'm going to leave it shut and see how long we can get out of it. The Jackery 1000, just chart topping it up, it's at 99%. Okay, the Jackery is fully charged. It is 4.45 p.m. on a Monday. I'm going to plug in my fridge into the 12 volt outlet of the Jackery. I'm gonna unplug the charger. Turn that on. Okay, so you can hear the fridge kicking in. The Jackery is no longer being charged from the AC outlet in the wall. It's strictly running on battery power. My fridge cooler is plugged into the 12 volt outlet on the Jackery 1000. It's 4.45 p.m. on Monday. And we're gonna let this run and we're gonna see how long it takes for the Jackery to run out of power. With electric coolers or fridges, whatever you wanna call them, you pretty much get what you pay for. My cooler that I use for this experiment 
was on the very inexpensive side. I paid about $200 Canadian for that electric cooler. It was on sale at Canadian Tire. Problem with the cooler was that it drew a constant 60 watts an hour. It never shut off. It wasn't able to uh, retain the temperature inside, so it always had to keep running. Compare that to a Dometic uh, high-end electric cooler that will eventually kick off, maintain its lower temperature, a lot more energy efficient, drop down to less than 10 watts an hour to maintain that temperature. And a cooler like that, a Dometic, you can get maybe up to three days. My results with my cooler, less than 16 hours, which makes sense because if you do the math, uh, 60 watts an hour divided by 1,000, you're going to get just about 16 hours out of that. So it's not going to meet my needs. That cooler is going back. I'll be returning it. So I was a little naive there. I should have researched that cooler a little bit better. Um, I just thought that it would be a little more efficient than it was. So that was the result with the fridge. Uh, hopefully uh, you learned something from that. I did. You wouldn't want to go away on a trip thinking that you could run it for three days when you, in fact you get less than one day from it. Okay, I've gone over a lot of things that the Jack here will power, um, how the solar panels work. I'm in my garage and I thought I'd try some power tools just to give you an idea of realistically what it will power and what it won't power. So first of all, I'll plug in my Sawzall. Plug it into the AC outlet. And we'll run it and see how it does. So that was drawing up to th over 300 watts an hour. Now this is my circular saw, 120 volts, but this draws 10 and a half amps. And I'm guessing that this is not gonna work, let's see. So again, it was only, it was showing that it was drawing about 370 watts. I'm not an electrician, but I believe the amperage is a factor in this, um, whether it's going to work or not, whether the Jackery 1000 is strong enough to power a 10 and a half amp circular saw. So it's, it's starting, but as soon as it starts to draw that constant power, the Jackery is shutting off. So you couldn't rely on it to use a circular saw, at least this size, maybe there's smaller ones. You more than likely could use it to charge um, batteries for a cordless circular saw, so that's something to think about. So speaking of cordless uh, batteries, circular saws are no. Here's my DeWalt uh, cordless drill batteries. Plug those in. Hit the AC. And it's charging. And uh, again, this is my 20 volt lithium batteries from my DeWalt cordless drill. And it's charging that. It's only drawing 23 watts an hour to charge that. So it's nice to know if you're working on a cottage off grid, some power tools that you can use, some power tools that you can't count on. This is an old uh, Black and Decker jigsaw, three and a half amps. That was drawing about 130 watts an hour, and again, that was running pretty well. Three and a half amp uh, jigsaw. So those are some power tools that I have in my garage. I thought I'd put through the test. I believe the amperage is a big factor. The circular saw was a no-go. Um, saws all worked. Jigsaw worked, and um, you know that's a good example of some of the tools that uh, you can run on. All right, let's try some kitchen appliances. Some of the things you might take camping with you. Here's a kettle. That is drawing a lot of 
watts. 1200 to be exact. So the big thing I'm learning here is that, first of all, the kettle's kicking out real quick. So we'll shut that off. Turn it on again. So that kettle is drawing almost 1300 watts an hour. It's gonna be out for a short period of time, right? But the amperage for the kettle is small. So the wattage that the jackery can draw out, almost 1300 watts an hour with the kettle. This will be the toaster. Okay, this is a, um, a four slice toaster. I just have two slices down and it's drawn almost um, 675 watts an hour. I'm gonna double that. And yeah, almost 1400 watts an hour with the toaster. Now again, you wouldn't be using it that long, right? So we'd be drawing a lot of power for a short period of time. So this is the Jackery plugged into a queen size electric blanket. Plugged it in, turn on the AC, turn on the electric blanket. And this electric blanket has 10 settings. So let's kick it up to the highest. So we have the electric blanket on its highest setting, which is number 10. It seems to be peaking at 100 watts an hour. You would never use this electric blanket on the highest setting for too long. It simply uh, heats up way too much. So I would never have to use it at this setting. But if it was really cold in extreme circumstances, it looks like it's drawing less than 100 watts an hour. It's fluctuating from 100 down to 80 now. And again, this is its highest setting. So turning the electric blanket down to its almost lowest setting is now drawing 4 watts an hour. So you could use this electric blanket during some winter camping to kind of complement your sleeping bag. And it would definitely get you through the night, probably a couple nights. So that's my review. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it. I really like the Jackery 1000. It was something that I've been planning to get for a long time. And I was very fortunate to work with Jackery and to be able to power my electronics while I'm off grid for multiple days at a time. Um, it's going to be nice. It's going to be nice to do some video editing when I'm on trips by myself to be able to run my computer with some downtime because I do find that relaxing. I don't find it like work. And then sometimes I find when I get home from a trip, I need to spend time with my family. I don't really want to be tied to my computer doing video editing. So um, to be able to do some of that on the road, it's going to be really nice. So that's it. That's the, the good and the bad that I experienced with the Jackery. Hopefully you liked it. And if you did uh, give the video a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. I have adventure videos coming out all the time. Cheers.